you're watching a 2016 AMD small form factor PC gaming build that I'm putting together here. Actually, I had this set up earlier this year and I've been using it all summer. I just got around to putting the video together for you guys so you can see the A10 7890K processor in action. Now, of course, I've got a variety of components here. Nothing too crazy, but good quality components, right? To have a good stable system up and running. We're going to put this all together in a do-it-yourself type of uh, scenario here. So you guys can do something like this as well at home. If you're on a budget, you know, you can adjust some of the components accordingly. Here's the list and I'll add also some links to these parts below in the description okay if you're interested so you can click below and get to those however right now we're going to go through talking about the star of the show which is the a10 7890k with the wrath cooler now if we look here how it compares you know it, this processor bridges the gap between the next generation which obviously we're waiting for from amd but it has four cores that's eight threads and uh, here are the specs of course, you can see here, this is an unlocked processor. So I did actually overclock it. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. 28 nanometer architecture, 12 compute cores, four of them the CPU, eight the GPU. 4.1 gigahertz is the stock at the default. And with the turbo, it goes up to 4.3, terrific. Maximum temperature around 72 degrees Celsius, as you can see, 95 watt, which is great. It's not really a power hungry uh, processor. That's why we're using only a 430 watt power supply and it comes built in with the R7 um, graphics card on the same die. All right. So when they engineered this, it has the CPU and the GPU on the same uh, package. Now here's the Wraith cooler. Some call it Wraith. And there you have it. Nice beefy looking um, cooler. AMD stepped up here and added uh, something that's quite decent and very quiet. I did enjoy uh, installing that it just clips on to the brackets on the motherboard very easy to install very nicely done there no hassles to install that on the FM2 plus socket you can see the motherboard again from AS rock that I'm using that little micro uh, ATX board and uh, the type of memory that I'll be installing in here is high-end I guess if you want to think about it the Corsair Vengeance Pro series is a little bit of a higher-end memory you don't have to um, go for that you can get something a little bit of a lower end Corsair memory and it'll do just fine but I do love the looks of having you know the same type of matching hardware in there same color coordination uh, in this case the um, Raidmax Hyperion case has a blue uh, hue so it's gonna add a, you know a nice um, glow-in-the-dark type of atmosphere and you're gonna see that once I install everything in here but uh, there's room, you know, if you want to install a slim uh, Blue Jay drive in there, for example, lots of room to add uh, maybe uh, liquid cooling down the road if you wanted to um, uh, overclock it. You can play around with it here. Lots of room to maneuver holes, cutouts, you know, maneuver all the cables in there from the power supply, etc. And even uh, at the bottom, you've got lots of uh, ventilation with those um, re removable dust filters. And obviously, there's room to add uh, another graphics card in there right should you not want to use um, the one that it comes built in with you know discrete graphics card or not it's up to you it's a do-it-yourself thing we're gonna put it all together now uh, all this AMD uh, stuff and the power supply you know I installed it here at the back you can see the cables dangling in there that's the first thing that I uh, like to install then I go for the board I install the board in its spot you can see lots of room to maneuver around that board um, love the color coordination here between the board the memory Lots of room there. You can see that the clip of the um, Wraith cooler installs very nicely. It doesn't interfere with anything. It doesn't touch the memory on the side. And um, put in the uh, Samsung Evo, the 850 uh, SSD drive in there, connected that so we can run Windows 10 on it. Turn off the lights, power it on, and you can see here you've got your party in a box ready to go so you can basically do your online gaming, stay up all night, and have fun that's basically what this is all about nice and quiet too it's just purring along you think this would be loud but it's not it's so nice and quiet and um, it doesn't heat up a lot either you can see here the temperature is running at a full load at 4.1 gigahertz okay so all four cores running full steam um, and like I mentioned earlier maximum temp was around 72 degrees Celsius so we still have 30 degrees Celsius to go before it hits 72 so that means that it's running roughly around 40 degrees Celsius 
right now, that processor, okay? So that gives you an idea of what these numbers mean, okay? So you have a good idea there. And um, obviously, if I disable the stress testing that I'm doing here, you know, then the um, clock speed drops, it goes into power saving mode, it goes into idle mode, so that way you can save energy, right? It doesn't utilize the full 95 watts, it's not going to actually, you know, consume that much. So let's go ahead and turn off the stress testing that I'm using here and once I do that everything just starts to drop you know voltage drops power consumption drops the frequency obviously uh, of the uh, processor drops because we're no longer needing all of that power and um, and the voltage you know will eventually drop down as well temperatures considerably go down as well which is what you would expect and I'm not worried about that at all here are, uh, again, another look at it running on idle. And uh, if you're wondering, well, what does the hardware look like? Uh, well, here's the um, motherboard again that I mentioned earlier I installed it on, the ASRock board and the uh, memory from Corsair running at CL9 timings. You can see there the 1866 megahertz. And uh, what else? Well, and there's the graphics, the built-in graphics. Okay, here are the specs for the GPU, the R7 graphics that come integrated with this chip. Again, I did test installing a separate graphics card later on just to see what would happen. The boost of performance is incredible. Obviously, when you add in, for example, an AMD R9 380X. So I did that and I'll show you some uh, benchmarks later on. This will do just fine for online gaming. You know, you want to do some casual gaming. You're not crazy about running everything necessarily on high settings when you run first person shooters, but you want to play them. No problem. We're not going to hold you back. You can play online uh, multiplayer uh, uh, with first-person shooters. But one thing I wanted to show you first is the overclocking. I did say that I overclocked it earlier. So here is what I did, 4.5 gigahertz, right? Putting the multiplier to 45, increasing the voltage, obviously, in the BIOS. So there's a few things that I had to do, obviously, to get it to this state stable. But that's not what this video is about. We're just looking how it operates and what are the temperatures like? Temperatures really only went up maybe at most 5 degrees Celsius, maybe less than that when I overclocked it to 4.5 gigahertz. Terrific. For those of you interested in the ADA 64 cache and memory benchmark, here it is. You can pause the screen and take a look at that. And uh, I did some uh, PC Mark 8 home accelerated, the most common home uh, computing tests. And uh, there are the results if you're interested. And of course, comparing it the default and overclocked overclocked to get a boost and if I add the R9 380x GPU that I talked about then obviously you know it jumps the frames per second for example were double almost in the gaming test on the fire strike uh, 3d gaming type of benchmarks you can see how it did on defaults okay so no overclocking and just with the integrated graphics card okay compared to these other results if um, we add the R9 380X in there, which is what I did. Obviously, it uh, more than doubles the score, and uh, it does terrific results, obviously, as you can see right there. So obviously, if we put in a graphics card like the R9 380X, you're going to do very good with this type of system, right? So keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to Battlefield 4 benchmarks, there's a variety of things that you can do. Obviously, if we play it on high settings, um, this processor on its own doesn't do too well, but I mean, it is playable on medium settings, multiplayer, I didn't have any problems on medium. And if you add the R9 380X, well, that's a different story, smooth as can be. Now on Fallout 4, same deal. You can play it no problem on low settings, add in the R9 380X, boom, beautiful, beautiful results. Similarly, on Tomb Raider, running it on normal preset, very smooth, using the integrated graphics card, high preset, still fairly decent, and then adding the R9 380X, crazy, super fast results, and there you have it. If you play online gamings, MMOs, things like that, you know, World of Warcraft, you know, you're not going to have any problems running those types of games on high settings. That's not an issue. So there you have it from AMD, beautiful little small form factor system. Comment below, let me know what you think, and again, thank you for watching.